Hello everyone. Lately, the world is going to hell. Many consider the situation critical. They say it's the second Cuban Missile Crisis, if not worse. Whether someone will use a nuclear weapon or not, time will tell. But one thing is certain, if a nuclear war starts, it will most likely end quickly. And the people who manage to survive will face a number of problems. First, our animal instincts will awaken and likely there will be widespread chaos and anarchy. Supplies of food, clean water, and essential items will run out quickly. Money will be useless to anyone and food will become the new currency. Nevertheless, the resources created by humans over the last few decades will not disappear immediately. To survive in such conditions, people will start looking for safe places and live in groups, avoiding unnecessary attention. With the onset of darkness and cold, groups of people will need sources of light and heat. That's why I bought a gasoline generator just in case, along with various inverters, to last for the initial period. Without electricity, humanity will plunge into the darkness of the Middle Ages. All rechargeable gadgets will be useless, because there will be no way to charge them. Simple flashlights, with batteries and accumulators, won't last long. Fortunately, people have invented solar panels and thermoelectric generators. But such things have low efficiency and are not always practical. Don't take everything said too seriously. I hope that dark times for the world won't come soon. But that they will come, that's for sure. Since the only thing humans have done since their inception is invent ways to destroy each other. Let's get to the point. In this video, I'm going to show simple methods of generating electricity with subsequent conversion into light. First, let's conduct a simple experiment. Take two wires made of different metals. For example, copper and aluminum, as they are the most common. Immerse them in a glass of regular tap water and connect these wires, now electrodes, to a regular voltmeter. Observe a slight deflection of the voltmeter needle. The voltage or potential difference between the electrodes is negligibly small. We have created the simplest chemical power source. Add a teaspoon of table salt to our glass and mix it well to create a saline solution or electrolyte. The potential difference has become much higher and is about half a volt. By connecting an ammeter in parallel to the electrodes, it becomes clear that the short circuit current of our battery is a mere one and a half milliamps and is rapidly decreasing. We have just conducted the same experiment that Alessandro Volta did over 200 years ago. Only instead of aluminum, he used a zinc electrode. By connecting several such cells in series, we can increase the total voltage of the battery. By connecting them in parallel, we increase the current. It's also worth noting that the current depends on many factors, the density and type of electrolyte, the area of the electrodes, and their distance from each other, as well as the metal of the electrodes themselves. But let's return to the original cell. Can such a negligible amount of energy be used to perform any useful work? The voltage of such a cell and the current are negligibly small. But no one forbids converting this into a different value. Converters are designed for such purposes. Today, we will look at a fairly popular type of converter known as ultra-low voltage converters. These converters are simple in their construction and typically contain one or a couple of transistors and a step-up transformer or inductor. They are often of the self-oscillating type and do not contain complex microcircuits. Designed, in particular, to power low-power consumers like LEDs, from a single AA battery, they can operate from a voltage of 0.5 to 0.6 volts and can extract every bit of energy even from a depleted battery. Many know that the minimum voltage at which a regular silicon transistor begins to open is 0.6 to 0.7 volts. But another type of transistor, the outdated germanium one, has a much lower bias voltage, starting from 0.2 volts. And, technically, if we use a germanium transistor in one of these simple converters, we can convert those tiny 0.2 volts into, say, 3 volts or more, and power an LED. Let's assemble a simple jewel thief. Many people refer to such converters this way. 
For this, we take out our stock of germanium transistors from storage. In the same storage, we find boards from old energy saving lamps or electronic transformers. Well, we also need some small components like a resistor and LEDs. From the ballast board of the energy saving lamp, we need this ferrite ring, from which we first remove all the factory windings. And we also need some kind of board for assembly, although it can be done with point-to-point -point wiring. I will be using these prototype boards that I bought from JLCPCB. JLCPCB is the leading manufacturer of printed circuit boards for projects of any complexity and for any purpose. The company can manufacture high-quality printed circuit boards with up to 32 layers. They offer a wide selection of solder mask colors, trace finishes, board thicknesses, and much more. Board prices start at just $2 for a batch of 5 boards size 10 by 10 cm, and there's also a 30% coupon available for 6-layer printed circuit boards. JLC is a company with a fully integrated production cycle. Strict quality control ensures the boards are always perfect. And that's how it will always be. Production times for boards are just a few days, but there's also an express service for manufacturing in just 24 hours. Ordering boards is very simple. Just upload your project archive with the original Gerber files, select the options you need, pay for your order, and that's it. The company also offers board assembly, stencil creation, and commercial 3D printing services. JLC PCB is easy to use, affordable to manufacture with, and reliable in operation. Links are in the description. Cut them to the required size and assemble the circuit. Our inductor is not wound yet. For this, we take enamel wire with a diameter of 0.2, 0.3 millimeters. Fold it in half as shown, and win 20 turns evenly with both strands, at once. Next, we use a multimeter to check the intact windings and connect the start of one winding to the end of another, as shown. For better clarity, I mark the intact windings with heat shrink tubing, white for one winding, black for the other. The resulting midpoint, the connection point of the windings, is connected to the positive terminal of the power source according to the diagram. Install the choke in place, connect it, and test it. It's enough to connect a single AA battery to the input of the circuit. If the LED lights up, it means everything is working. If not, check the correctness of the connections, the start and end of the choke, as well as the transistor pinout and its overall functionality. Such a construction, by the most modest estimates, will provide continuous illumination of a single white LED for several months from a regular large D-sized battery. Perhaps this is the most efficient source of low-level lighting. The minimum supply voltage is about 0.2 volts, sometimes even 0.15. By the way, our homemade battery powers the inverter quite well. There are countless jewel fief designs, and their sizes can also vary. It all depends on the creator. Here's a similar jewel fief, but using a silicon SMD transistor. The construction is no larger than a 5mm LED. If you take a regular supercapacitor with a capacity of 1 to 4 farads, like this one, for diodes, preferably shocky, but in my case, it will be a ready-made bridge, as well as a unipolar four-phase stepper motor with a gearbox from Arduino projects like the 28BYJ48, you can make a simple dynamo flashlight that converts muscle power into electricity. For convenience, I printed the corresponding case on a 3D printer downloaded from the internet. I'll leave the link in the description. Yes, I do understand what 3D printer in a post-apocalyptic world, and in general, dynamo flashlights are not a novelty. They were invented back at the beginning of the 20th century. I know all of this, but no one forbids creating and improving. In the circuit of such a flashlight, we have a power switch and an indicator, LED parallel to the supercapacitor. Its lighting voltage is about 1.7, 1. 1. 9 volts, serving as a simple charge indicator for the supercapacitor, the switch. If it is open, the flashlight operates only from the generator. By rotating, we get light. If the switch is closed, we charge the supercapacitor in parallel, and when it is charged, you can stop turning the generator handle. The flashlight will operate from the supercapacitor. If you need to turn off the flashlight, simply open the switch. 
The supercapacitor will remain charged, and we can power the flashlight from it at any time. Considering the very long lifespan of the supercapacitor and other parts, such a flashlight is practically indestructible and will last forever. The previously mentioned motor, as you understood, works as a generator in our flashlight. The generator produces alternating current. By converting it to direct current, we can charge the supercapacitor. Moreover, the handle of the shaft can be turned either clockwise or counterclockwise. The supercapacitor will still charge. 3. Bright white LEDs will provide enough illumination to understand what's happening a few meters away from you in the dark. Technically, the specified generator can produce about 5 volts, and no jewel thief is needed for the LEDs to light up. You can simply connect a couple of supercapacitors in series and power the LED. In this case, the LED lights up only if the voltage on the supercapacitors rises above 2.5 to 3 volts, whereas with a converter, it lights up from as low as 0.2 volts. That is, with a converter, we use almost all the stored energy. Thanks to the ultra-low supply voltage, such simple converters can operate from peltier elements with a minimal temperature difference, as well as from other weak sources. In conclusion, I want to say that a long time ago, I recorded several videos on the topic of ultra-low voltage inverters. Back then, all of this wasn't particularly in demand, and those videos were more of an entertaining nature. When creating them, I never thought that there might come a time when people would seriously consider stocking up on them in case of an apocalypse, as lately the internet is just flooded with videos on this topic. The times we live in are difficult for everyone. But I sincerely hope that it will all end soon, that people will come to their senses in, not squander their last chance. Peace to everyone, friends. Until we meet again, goodbye.